It's Dr. Drew Midday Live with Lauren Saban. That's us, Midday Live, Lawrence Vaughn, Dr. Drew. We are going to speak to our friend from KABC, John Phillips, regarding the murders on the BART trains with BART officials apparently obscuring the details. Uh, we are, though, right now going to go out to Lane Mendelson, the president of Vantage Point, to discuss the meltdown on Facebook. Uh, Lane, welcome to the program. Hey, thank you very much. Hey, hey for, before we get into this, tell us about Vantage Point. What is it a fund? What is it? No, uh, Vantage Point is a proprietary uh, software that um, our company developed almost 30 years ago that uses artificial intelligence to forecast market moves with up to 86% accuracy. It's uh, something that we, uh, we've obtained two U.S. patents on it. My father actually was the, uh, the originator of the concept back in the late 1980s, and it's something that uh, in my father's footsteps I've continued to evolve and improve, and uh, we've helped uh, about 30,000 people around the world to become more financially independent. Very interesting. Well, well done. And you, we've all been watching the market action today as it pertains to Facebook. They shed off $130 billion in two hours. Zuckerberg lost $16.8 billion. But uh, to be fair, their price hasn't even returned yet to its April values. It's been sort of flying high for a while. Maybe that's been just the exuberance of the foolish foolishness of the marketplace rather than any fundamental problem with Facebook. What do you say? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people thought that Facebook was kind of invincible. If you look at what happened um, back earlier in the year in March with uh, the scandal that occurred with the, the data leaks, you know, um, people thought, oh, this is the end. This is, you know, where is this going to go? Well, if you look at a chart um, since that point in time, and Facebook has done nothing but go up. It's gone up about 40% uh, in the last few months. So, People were starting to think, man, even if there's bad news, this stock just keeps going up. And so this was just a little bit, bit of dose of reality that, yeah, um, yeah you know, if, if, if revenues aren't there and user growth isn't there, it's going to have a, a negative impact on the stock price. Yeah, and uh, the CFO, I think it was, made some comments today that were particularly, um, what shall we say, inadvantageous <laughs> to the price of the stock. <laughs> he, he said he... They they talked about like was this their call today? Was it a quarterly call or something? Is that what set this whole thing off? Yeah, yesterday uh, they had the call yesterday. and um, immediately it uh, was a, a domino effect. Okay, so what essentially what he said was that the revenue growth were slowing, not falling. Right? He didn't say they were going away, but he talked about a sort of a reentrenchment in safety and security with twenty thousand new hires, which that's good for the economy. I was glad to see that. But then he said expenses would increase by fifty to sixty percent. That that's not that's not. I, I, I'm sure that wasn't received well in the call. No, and and as you correctly pointed out, um, the numbers weren't good, but they they did add to their user base. It was just it was the lowest number of additions since at least let's say the 2011 time frame. So it, it grew just not as much as people had expected or anticipated. As it relates to their costs, I mean, they were very clear in saying that um, there are going to be costs associated with fixing some of the problems. They admit that there are problems. Uh, they admit that they need to be addressed. And they said, look, spending is going to increase. Uh, profit margins are going to compress significantly. Um, but... Uh, it will be good for the long haul, and I think that's what people have to decide. Are they in this for the long haul? Do they believe in this company as a, a long-term investment, right. or are they just kind of trading it? Well, go ahead, Lauren. Well, I mean, we were talking earlier about this, whether or not Facebook sees itself. They've always seen themselves as a tech company, not a media company, and they've been getting um, you know, all this bad press and uh, scrutiny now over over their news feed which I'm sure they look at as just, you know, one small part of, of the Facebook empire. But my question to you would be, um, with all of the fake news backlash and the idea that this, this generation right now, these younger generation right now, is not using Facebook anymore. Is it going to be? Well, but they, but they own Instagram, too, mind you, which they right, are What using. I'm saying is, but they don't use that platform. They use Instagram. Right. They don't want to use the same platform their parents are on. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a whole conglomerate, and, um, you know, Facebook is smart because they have diversified so much. And, Lauren, you correctly pointed out, it's not just a social media platform. It's not even just a tech company. It is a media company. And when you're a media company, 
there are costs that are associated with successfully operating a media company. I think that's what Facebook is kind of figuring out now is that if we're going to truly be a media company, um, there are other uh, costs that we need to reinvest into the company to protect ourselves so that we don't find ourselves in trouble like they saw with the Cambridge Analytica. I mean, look, the, the Justice Department, the FBI, both investigating Facebook over that, the Security and Exchange Commission, the Federal Trade Commission, or conducting their own investigations, uh, they need to protect themselves and safeguard themselves from doing something that they shouldn't be doing. Um, and to, to put those safeguards in place, it does require capital, which means that that is going to compress the profit margins, which in the short run, investors and traders, they don't like to hear that. But if, it's, if that's being done for the greater good and for the long-term benefit as an investor, that, that's a good thing. And, you know, our software, we've been forecasting Facebook to go up I mean, we forecasted to go down back in, uh, you know, mid-March. We forecasted to start going up back uh, towards the end of March. It's been just a straight shot up, but all good things do come to an end, and no market goes up forever. So it made sense that there there has to be some, some sort of a pullback. Although, technically, it, it was pretty severe pullback, right? 19% of the value mm. of the stock in one day. That That suggests a little something. That's falling off a cliff. Now, the question is, is that going to be – now, a new baseline, and they're just going to trundle along there for a while, or is this going to be a trend down for a while, too? Now, you're saying that they're re-entrenching for the long term, but the kind of investor, it seems to me, that's been flying high with this stock is not the long, not the real investor. They're, they're, the, they're the gamblers. No? Well, you, you got to think of it this way. Let's go back. You know, about 25 years ago, Philip Morris, which was, you know, at that time, one of the most important stocks in the market, it lost 25% of its value in a single day. That's huge. That's pretty analogous to what we're seeing here with Facebook. If you flash forward, look what Philip Morris is now. I mean, it's, it's regained its pricing power. It's produced massive dividends for shareholders. It's delivered excellent long-term share price returns. But it did take a period of about 18 months or so to regain the losses from that single day. I think that we'll probably see something similar if Facebook takes the necessary steps and makes the necessary reinvestments that they need to make. Just to tell you, you know, I've got two young daughters. I manage trading accounts for, for myself and for them as well. I, last night after I saw the big drop, I'm like, wow, this stock just went on sale. I bought some for myself. I bought some for my daughters. Okay, so, so you think you, you think know, it's that's, just a, that's my perspective. You, all right, you think it's just a correction. So, so, so if you take stocks uh, uh, like Facebook and – Recently, Netflix has had a big correction as well. These are these, are, as Lauren was pointing out, these are companies that are tech stocks in businesses that are really not their business. In other words, Facebook is now in news, and Netflix is becoming sort of more like a studio than a distribution platform. Instagram is becoming YouTube, right? With their own TV, how, and and think how different those models are than, say, a Google. Which stock has also been flying high, but they have revenues to justify that. Why wouldn't somebody head on over there as opposed to staying in a stock that seems unnecessarily inflated like Facebook that's now on its ass? But go ahead. Well, you know, I think um, you have to look at it and say, yes, it's a tech stock, but it's also in a specific industry or sector, let's say media. So there's this crossover. Some companies you can say, oh, that's purely a tech stock. Other companies you can say, that's purely a media company. But then you have companies like Facebook, you have companies like Netflix, where they kind of uh, – kind of go into both areas, and I think that's actually good. I would rather have a company that's diversified than all in one area, because if it's all in one area and tech stocks, pure tech stocks just crumble for some reason, let's say, well, that's going to have a dramatic impact, especially on the companies that are purely tech stocks. But if they are in tech and they're in media and content uh, creation, content distribution, well, now you've got some buffer in those periods of time that uh, you may not have in those pure tech companies, for example. So I, I think it's a good yeah. thing. And I, 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 I think it's good saying, for companies I, to diversify. I, I get what you're saying, but but I'm making the point that those the Netflixes and the Facebooks don't have the same fundamentals that a Google does. I mean, you're saying Alphabet is strictly a, st a tech stock? No, no. I mean, they're, I, I just uh, did an interview the other day where I was amazed that people didn't realize that Google is not just a search company. They're search, they're right. media, they're into right. autonomous vehicles, artificial intelligence. Right, no, so I think you that, kind of agree. Uh, you kind of agree with me, right? I, absolutely, I do. Yeah, okay, got it, okay. All right, so so I mean, you put your money where your mouth is. Uh, I think that's pretty bold to step in, um, and I, I uh, I'm I 
based on just that, what I'm guessing is, is and based on your track record of being pretty good at predicting these things, that this is a buying opportunity and this stock will be okay and they're sufficiently diversified and their business model is sufficiently um, solid that uh, these changes they're going to cost in the short term will solve their long-term problems and make them a stronger company, a stronger product, and something more viable for the future. Would that be a better way to summarize I, it? I think that's a good way to summarize it, and Facebook is not the first FANG stock to disappoint recently, so I think it's a time to be cautious, uh, but also be looking for those buying opportunities. I, and I, Netflix was one of the ones, too, and I'm not so sure about that company. Lauren, do you have any questions before I, I let Lane go? No, I'm trying to get a hold of my financial planner right now. <laughs> so my Facebook. <laughs> you might maybe we should be shorting it. I mean, Lane's got a good track sure. record, but it's, no one's 100. Uh, percent All right, Lane. Uh, again, website for you. If people want to follow up on you. Yeah, it's uh, vantagepointsoftware.com, and uh, right. people can get a free market forecast from us as well. Very good. Thanks so much. Appreciate it very much, Lane. Thanks, guys. Thank you. You got it. Eight hundred two 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 five two two two. I mean, I think it's fun to think.